Okay, I'm going to do a quick demonstration of my home theater Mac Mini. It's a it's about one month old and it's a custom build. It has a 2.26 gigahertz Intel Core 2 Duo with four gigs of RAM and the standard 120 gigabyte hard drive. I've connected it to my AV receiver with an HDMI cable. Now you will need an adapter, so I bought a Apple Display Port to HDMI adapter on. Amazon.com for $22. I also bought an optical cable. It's a special type of optical cable for the type of connector on the back of the Mac Mini. I think it's standard for most uh, computers and it was only $5. So that allows me to stream full quality audio to my AV receiver. So I get 5.1 Dolby Surround. Now let's get it started. Right now I have my Mac Mini on. And I'm going to use my Logitech Harmony 1 to activate my equipment. So let's choose the Mac Mini activity. Right now it's turning on my television and my AV receiver and setting them to the correct inputs. And there's my home screen. Now something you'll notice, unfortunately, is I have an overscan issue, which I have to work on fixing. There is an application out there that allows you to set a custom uh, screen size, which I haven't used yet, partly because I don't really use my Mac Mini as a full computer. I use it to run Boxy or XBMC or Front Row, which are the media control applications, the home, basically the uh, media center applications. Now, the biggest issue when you have a Mac Mini on your home theater is control. There are several options. One of them is a mouse. Now this happens to be a Logitech MX Air Air Mouse. So that means I can control it by using it in the air as if I was using a pointer. So for example, let's launch Firefox. There's Firefox. Now, of course, I if I want to uh, type anything in, I'll have to bring up a keyboard. So I also have a Logitech MX5500 Bluetooth keyboard, and that is connected to the Mac Mini with Bluetooth. The other option, whoops, I hit a button I don't want to hit. Let's cancel that. The other option is another Mac. If you have several Macs on your home network, you can control it using screen sharing. So let's, I'm going to show you that really quick. If you go to, uh, Finder, you can see the devices or the computers I have on my network, and I can click on one of them and go to screen share. So if I click screen share, I can see my uh, my uh, Ma I'm sorry, my iMac, or my MacBook, or my Mac Mini. I'm in Mac Mini right now. So here, this gives me full control. I have a keyboard. I have a mouse pad. And of course I have a screen which I can see better than uh, the big screen because at a distance, unfortunately, it's, it's still pretty hard to see the text unless you zoom up, which, is, uh, which you can do as well. Uh, but of course this is kind of hard to use as a, as a remote controller. This is kind of a big remote controller. So although I do like using this the best, it's probably not something I would recommend for everybody. The other option, which I think is the best one, is Air Mouse. Now, Air Mouse is a remote that works on your Wi-Fi, your local Wi-Fi connection. It's an application that you can buy on iTunes at the App Store for $6. All you'll have to do is install the Air Mouse server on whatever device you're controlling. So I have this on several Macs, and I can control it simply by bringing up this app, and it connects automatically. So this gives me... A, not only a uh, trackpad, but a multi-touch trackpad. So, well, I don't have a screen big enough to scroll, but let's bring up Amazon.com. So here I can scroll. Uh, and, of course, I'm not going to demonstrate the app uh, in great detail, but you can see there's, there's a lot of neat features. And one of the things it does is have a keyboard. So let's go to, in order to bring up the keyboard, you shake it. So let's go to Google, let's do a search. Let's type in Apple. So there you go, I 
we've got to search. Go to the Apple Store. And bring up my favorite site. And the other thing is you can use this just like an MX Air, an Air Mouse, by clicking this button up here. And now if I hold that down, I can use this in the air. So let's go to the iPod Touch. And the great thing about this, unlike the MX Air, when I lift my finger off, it doesn't continue moving. So therefore I can put it down without the cursor going going all over the place. And that's been very that's very useful. But unfortunately it does not work as well in the air as the MX Air. So I generally don't use it, but it is a neat feature to use. It would probably be best if you're using it for um, for presenter or keynote or PowerPoint. All right. Okay. That now that's uh, that's the, the air mouse. Okay. Now, in order to control the content uh, of your home theater, you will want to run some sort of software. And what I've chosen to do is use Boxy, which is a very nice piece of software that allows you not only to connect to your home network, if you have content on another computer, particularly all my content is on the iMac, that's why I don't need a big hard drive for my Mac Mini, because I simply stream it over my network from my iMac. So if I bring up Boxy, you'll see my name. And I'm using, again, I'm using this. And you don't need this. You, I can also use my, my remote, which is the benefit. So if you don't want to use any of these, these, uh, these creative remote controls like your MacBook or your keyboard or your iPod, simply use your remote by bringing up Boxy. Now, Boxy is not the only one. XBMC is the other, which I, have, which I also use. And there's others like Front Row or iTunes. So let's go to the video. I'm just going to demonstrate. I'm going to go to browse because I want to go to my network to get to my content. That's my uh, iMac, which I probably should name better. And since my video files are all over the place, I'm just going to go ahead and I just, I'm just i sharing my entire content and I have to scroll through it. And one of these days I'll organize it better so you don't have to do so much folder searching. So let's see. Let's go do Helvetica, a movie recommended to me by a good friend of mine. So right now it's it's buffering. And simple as that. Now I can also put a DVD into my iMac and stream it from there or I can put a DVD right into the Mac Mini. So let's try that. I'm going to go to Exit or Menu. And of course, Box has some other benefits like streaming online content, which is why I use it over a lot of the other services like XBMC. There is another app that you can use on your iPhone to control more applications. Uh, it's called Romo, but I'm not going to demonstrate that as well. I'm just going to start uh, a DVD. I'm just pop it in. This is Caprica, the Battlestar Galactica spinoff. So let's see if that comes up as easily as I hope it does. It should bring up DVD player. That's where I last left off. It's pretty clever. And of course I can skip ahead just like any DVD player. I can go to the menu. Sorry. Unfortunately, menu brought brought up front row. So that's front row. That's not what I wanted to do, but so there's some obstacles to using that, to using a remote control. But let's see if I can go, if I use front row instead of a DVD player. It should allow me to be able to use this fully. Goddess, I think 
Athena now, they say she will be. So yeah, Careful that's a DVD. How does the defend? Now let's see if I can bring up the menu now. There we go. Of course it works very fast. And of course it sounds great. And if you look, if you can see my receiver right now, you can see that I'm getting 5.1 Dolby Digital Surround. So I'm getting all the, uh, the uh, data I need for high quality audio. All right, that's all. Uh, thanks for watching. And if I come up, if you have any requests and would like to see other software used, let me know. I'll be happy to demonstrate. Until then, thanks for watching.